The screening of this film enables the crew members to recollect what all is being discussed during the course by the instructor and also refresh memory on what was being practically exercised during the course We will now describe to you the cabin emergency door. There are four doors on A320 referred as forward left, half left and exactly opposite are forward right and half right. All the four are identical in shape, size and operation. They are also termed as type 1 exits. Each door is fitted with a single lane slide come wrap. As we look at the forward right door from inside starting from 12 o'clock position going clockwise to begin with there is an emergency exit light. Just below that there is a clear white light. There is one door handle and adjacent to that there is a door frame handle on the lower part there is a slide container containing a single lane slide come wrap on this container there is a pressure gauge indicating the slide inflation cylinder pressure the pressure can also be cross checked on ptp panel at the pressure station At the bottom left corner on the door frame there is a red wall mounted exit light there is a door frame handle on the left hand side also a viewer can be seen at the center of the door there is an arm disarm lever this door is in the disarm position confirmed by the green band inscribed disarm a mechanical indicator a safety pin is always inserted when the door is disarmed coming to the door operating handle it is lifted up for unlocking and pushed down for locking for normal operation of the door for passenger disembarkation the handle is lifted up and the door is pushed out while holding the door frame handle with the other hand for your balance and safety adjacent to the white light there is a red light this light when illuminated flashes it flashes when the following pre conditions are met with firstly the aircraft is on ground secondly the door is in disarm mode thirdly the cabin differential pressure is more than 2.5 millibars fourthly both engines of aircraft are shut down should this light flash you must inform the commander opening of the door should not be attempted when this red light is flashing in case the door is unattended and there is no step ladder or aero bridge positioned the safety strap is mandated this strap is pulled out from the aft end of the door frame and hooked on to the forward end for closing the door push the gust lock down on the support arm that is hinge of the door balance yourself by holding the door frame handle and then pull the door towards you then push the door operating handle down for locking for emergency operation of the door that is when there is a requirement of emergency evacuation the door is opened in arm position the initial movement of the door operating handle itself illuminates the white steady light inscribed slide armed this light is to remind you that the door is being operated in arm position while opening the door in arm position 
you lift the door operating handle and you must remember to release the handle immediately i repeat you must release the handle as soon as you have lifted it because the door opening in arm position has pneumatic assistance in case if you continue holding on to the door handle you will be flung out with the door resulting in a major accident at the back of the support arm there is a pneumatic assistance button now you carefully observe the slide being inflated the slide unfolds sectionally because of half tie restraint or velcro should the slide not inflate automatically you lift the cover at the door sill and pull the manual inflation handle located on your right on the door sill the slide is now ready for evacuation using positive commands for evacuation you firmly assist the passengers placing your hand on his lower back passengers should be directed to stretch hands jump and slide as far as possible they should not be allowed to sit and slide in order to save time remember the evacuation is to be completed within 90 seconds on land evacuation able body passengers may assist on the other end of the slide in maintaining their balance for ditching the slide cum wrap should be disconnected by pulling the disconnect handle located at the door sill as shown we shall now be describing the physical features of the slide cum wrap there are canopy masks on the slide to facilitate the erection of the canopy there are boarding strap to facilitate the passengers boarding raft in ditching operation you can now observe the illuminated light along the length of the slide there are two aspirators which help in sucking the atmospheric air supplementing the inflation bottle for shoot inflation there is also a knife on the side to cut the mooring line subsequent to detaching the raft during ditching operation there is a provision to connect manual inflation pump to the raft should it deflate partially support straps are provided on the sides to facilitate passengers to reach the boarding point of the raft we will now go over the details of overwing exits there are two overwing exits on the port side and two similar overwing exits exactly opposite on the starboard side all the four overwing exits are identical in size shape operation they are also called as type 3 exits we shall now describe the details of the overwing exit from inside the cabin starting from 12 o'clock position going clockwise there is a cover flap on the upper portion of the overwing exit the moment any cover flap is opened slide armed white light on the side illuminates steady this is to remind you that the cover flap is removed intentionally or inadvertently from outside we can observe the panel at the wing root behind which the slide is stored then there is a red colored emergency exit light located between the two overwing exits at the bottom right is another wall mounted exit light on the lower part of the window is a hand grip which helps in lifting the window after unlocking there are three placards on each overwing exit one at the top right corner depicting the procedure of opening the overwing exit second on the top right corner where the weight of the window is shown and on the third placard or the exit row seating requirements the opening of the window is done by first opening the cover flap the moment any cover flap is opened 
applied armed white light on the side illuminate study. Below the cover flap, you will find the window operating handle with pull written on it. As soon as the handle is pulled inwards and downwards, dual lane slide automatically inflates and deploys on the respective side. The slide unfolds gradually because of half tie restraint velcros. The deployment of the slide seen is of the port side. Once any one window is opened, the dual lane slide inflates and deploys automatically. This is a dual lane slide meaning two passengers at a time can slide together. The passenger should be advised to go out of the overwing exit facing the rear galley and in the sequence of leg body leg. Beneath the o-ring exits on the wing there are red fluorescent painted arrows pointing backwards towards the slide. These arrows lead the passengers to o-ring slide. They should then sit on the wing, stretch hands forward and slide down. Able-bodied passengers on the other end of the slide may assist them. Let us return to the interior of the aircraft for more details. At the top inner corner, a red manual inflation handle can be seen. This is to be pulled in case the auto inflation fails. At the top outer corner, there is a hook to attach a lifeline. The other end of the lifeline should be attached to the bracket on the wing, generally after ditching. These two features are provided in all the four overwing exits. Let's now go over the physical features of the slide. Seen here are the illuminated lights along the length of the slide. No fail handles at the loose end of the slide for using deflated slide as apron. A snap hook for attaching the other end of the apron to the wing. It is important to know firstly that all the four o-ring exits are always kept in the armed position. They cannot be disarmed by the cabin crew. Secondly, whether the o-ring exit is open from inside or outside, the dual lane slide on the respective side will inflate and deploy. Thirdly, this slide can neither be used as raft nor can be detached by cabin crew. We will now go into the detailed operation of call system from cockpit to cabin. Normal call from cockpit to cabin either to forward attendant or aft attendant is identified by high low chime accompanied by pink steady light on the respective area call panel that is ACP and a steady green light with the text message on the respective attendant indication panel that is AIP displaying a text message call captain. This call can be reset either by pressing the reset push button on the handset or by simply placing the handset back. An emergency call from cockpit to cabin is identified by three high-low chime audible in the cabin accompanied by pink flashing light on all ACPs, pink flashing light on all AIPs with a pulsing text message displaying emergency call. You can now see the warning indications of smoke detection in the lavatory. Three low chime is audible accompanied by amber flashing light on the respective ACP, pink flashing light on all EIPs with a text message displaying LAV A or LAV D or LAV E smoke. By pressing the reset push button on the respective attendant panel you can reset all indications except the integral lights on the lav smoke push button 
on the power retinant panel. These integral lights extinguish only after the density of the smoke falls below the warning threshold. Warnings reoccur every 30 seconds should the smoke persist. The next system being checked on FAP is EVAC command system. This system is designed to indicate the commencement of evacuation and is to be initiated before opening the doors in arm position. In case of anticipated evacuation, when evac command is initiated from the cockpit, you hear a shrill intermittent horn at the power retinant station and aft retinant station associated with evac button light flashing on FAP and AAP. This horn can be shut off at respective stations by pushing the reset push button. In case of unanticipated evacuation and in the absence of communication from the cockpit, when you feel evacuation is imminent, you press the evac command push button. An integral green light illuminates on the command push button associated with the same shrill intermittent horn at FAP, AAP and cockpit. In addition, the evac button red integral lights flash at FAP and AAP. The horn at individual stations can again be shut off. The system functions in similar manner during cabin preparation checks. However, there is a possibility that when you press the command push button on the FAP, you may not hear or see anything related to evac system in the cabin, indicating the related switch in the cockpit is not in captain and purser position. You are now seeing the power megaphone provided on board the aircraft. The power megaphone is used in two situations. One, in case public address system in cabin becomes unserviceable and two, in an emergency situation to address the passengers outside the aircraft should the situation demand. During pre-flight equipment checks, the megaphone serviceability is checked by pressing and holding press to talk button and knocking on the mouthpiece area. In actual use, press and hold the button Put the mouthpiece collar resting on the upper lip and talk in clear, loud voice. This is the Rescue 406 Emergency Locator Transmitter. In general, we call it as the radio beacon. This uh, 406 is kept in the aircraft VTEPL, that means this radio beacon 406 is specific to aircraft. This has got an antenna. This antenna is held by the clips which is held again by the paper onto the body of this radio beacon. We have the vent holes here, uh, diametrically opposite. Then we have the cord. This cord can be removed when in use. Below that cord we can see a plastic bag here in which you will have to fill the liquid. Any liquid, water, tea, coffee, urine, anything. Then you can see the bottom of this radio beacon where we have got the ports for the water to get into the radio beacon to energize the transmitter inside. Now the complete instructions of the use of the radio beacon is given here, operating instructions. In case if there is any doubt on that point, you must refer to these uh, instructions there. Plus the details of the radio beacon and how, what are the frequencies is going to transmit is also given there. So in case if the aircraft crash lands in a remote place and if you have to transmit the signal to the authorities, like uh, air traffic control, flood dispatch or anybody because the, one of the signal goes to the satellite and comes back to the ground. This, these signals will be picked up by any other agency which is having this uh, frequency tuned. 
you can see that it's written here as COSPOS uh, SARSAT. That means the satellite which is dedicated to receive these signals will receive the signal and then return it back to the ground so that larger area is covered so that the information will be available to the authorities. The information which is available from the satellite will be the air aircraft registration number to which operator it belongs and where exactly the situation is occurred. That information will be available through the satellite. Now in case if you are planning to use the radio beacon on land, you must release the antenna from this clips and you must please ensure that you are not uh, coming in the way because it is spring loaded otherwise also it can be slowly released manually by just releasing like, like that so that you are not hurt once this radio beacon is released you must take out this bag and this cord Take out this bag and fill it up with any liquid and then insert the radio beacon into the bag. You must ensure that the water level comes at least to the half of this vent hole. Once the water gets into the radio beacon, the transmitter is energized and the signals get transmitted. This res Rescue 406 transmits emergency transmitter transmits three frequencies, 121.5 MHz, 243 megahertz and 406 megahertz that is the basic reason why this name is given as rescue 406 this rescue 406 uh, frequency speciality is that it will transmit to the uh, satellite in turn the satellite will send the signal to the ground so on ground you must once you insert the radio beacon into the bag you must keep uh, stirring the water periodically you must be positioned at little higher level so that the, the signals are not obstructed by any ground obstructions. This radio beacon is also used in case if the aircraft ditches over the water. In that case, the cabin crew will be taking out this uh, cord and then unless this is 18 meters cord, you can tie it to the aircraft or the dinghy and then throw the radio beacon into the water. Before you throw the radio beacon into the water, you will find that the radio beacon is already held like this. And this is by the clip. This paper band will melt in water. Melt in the sense it becomes softer. So once it becomes soft, it will release the radio antenna automatically. And the, this uh, radio beacon will be oscillating in the sea as long as the oscillation is not beyond certain limit the transmitter continues to be there in case if you want to stop the transmission due to any reason or if you want to conserve the life of the transmitter you can just remove it from the water and then place it horizontally this is a rebreathing oxygen system portable oxygen bottle this bottle has got a capacity of 310 liters this is used for two purposes. Number one, for administering the oxygen. Number two, it can be used during while the cabin crew is fighting the fire or smoke, in a dense smoke. This bottle has got the pressure gauge. During the cabin preparation, you should ensure that the pressure is on the small red band. This has an on-off valve. This on-off valve has to be turned anti-clockwise for opening. During the cockpit preparation, you must ensure that the, this valve is kept in the full closed position. This oxygen bottle has got the first aid outlet where the, you will be connecting the first aid mask. The first aid mask can be connected just by plugging it and then pressing press and rotate the way you do the in the at home the engagement of the bulb you just engage and rotate it and for removing you press it and rotate it and take it out before you engage the first aid mask you must ensure that this on off valve is kept open and then you engage the first aid mask 
you will hear the hissing sound you see that once you engage the first aid mask you are supposed to ensure that the mask has got flow this you you can see the flow indicator in some first aid mask you may not find this flow indicator the flow of the oxygen also can be seen by inflation of this uh, plastic uh, tube here once the flow is confirmed by checking the flow at the end of the tube you can hear the hissing sound then you will be donning the mask the second purpose of this bottle to use the use the full face mask in case if you are you fighting the fire or smoke in a very dense smoke situation we have an outlet second outlet here which is connected to the demand regulator on which you have an outlet here in this outlet you will be connecting the full face mask this has got the donning part and this part is the connecting part now we'll be connecting this to the outlet the full face mask has to be just hard pressed and rotated like that now the mask is completely fitted to the bottle you will have to don the mask and ensure that these straps are holding to your head this uh, bottle has got the third outlet which is covered by the metallic cover this cover can be removed and we'll be engaging the adapter into this adapters are provided only on a300 aircraft this adapter is useful only for the cockpit crew on a300 this adapt this outlet is not usable on 320 so we have seen that this bottle has got three outlets one is the first aid mask connection which is identified by the green plastic plug this is meant to be used for you for walk around or to administer the oxygen to a sick passenger the second outlet we have seen the full face mask this this connection or the with this uh, outlet is used for connecting the full face mask in case if you are fighting the fire or smoke in the dense smoke situation the third outlet we have seen this is to be used only on a300 by the cockpit crew and not usable on c20 now we will be discussing about the fire extinguisher which is kept both on a300 and c20 this is a helon fire extinguisher this can be used on all types of fires class a class b class c the details of this bottle as you see we have a pressure gauge during your cabin preparation you must ensure that the pointer shows on the green band this this bottle has got a white handle with the help of this white handle you can carry the bottle from place to place you can see a black handle here this black handle to be pressed to break the wire lock once you press this one the wire lock breaks so that this trigger lever which is red in color can be pressed to discharge the fire extinguisher so when you are preparing to fight the fire you carry the bottle from one place to the place of fire you press this black tab to break the wire lock and then you press the red lever always you must ensure that you got a hand at the bottom so that you can orient the discharge to the base of the fire in addition to the portable oxygen bottle kept in the cabin on a320 aircraft we have 
one more oxygen bottle which is kept behind the co-pilot seat. The difference between the cabin bottle and the cockpit bottle is that it has got uh, two outlets of uh, same size and we have a different mask to be connected to any one of these two. The mask which is going to be connected to the portal bottle is yellow in color plus it has got a pipeline which can be connected to the portable bottle. The mask can be connected just like any other first aid mask. You can see the mask is connected and the mask is donned by the cockpit crew on the similar way as we had donned the full face mask of the cabin. And this has got a electrical wire for communication purposes.